Hi readers, recently we reached 3,000 subscribers here on this channel and to celebrate that, I thought I would do my first ever Q&A video. So a little while ago, I asked you to send me your questions, book related or not, and I got a great response, so thank you. Today, I'm here to answer your questions. Now, I wanted to answer all your questions, each one of them, but I realized that if I did that, some of my answers probably wouldn't be too interesting and also I would have to repeat some of the answers. So instead of doing that, because that would be too dull to watch, I had to do a little bit of a selection, not much, I hope you don't mind, but if you have any additional questions or if I don't answer your question in the video and you still want me to answer it, feel free to let me know in the comments section. So let's begin with the questions and the first one comes from Dim who says, I want to know more about you, your life story, etc. Well, Thank you for your interest, Dim. I really appreciate that. There is nothing that interesting about my life story. I am originally from the Canary Islands, so that's off the northwestern coast of Africa, right next to Morocco. However, I lived in the United Kingdom, mostly in England for many years. I come from a working class environment. I was the first person in my family to ever attend university. I have a BA in English Studies and an MA in English Literature. I also started a PhD back in the day, but I dropped out when I realized that I didn't really want to have a career in academia, but that's ancient history now. I have done different jobs over the years, mostly boring 9 to 5 office work, but also a considerable amount of freelance work and of course a fair amount of teaching and even some lecturing, not much. Um, I live with my partner and I don't have any children or pets. Okay, next question comes from Matthew Trickett, who asks, what is the reading culture like in the Canary Islands? Who is the most famous author from the islands? And do you go to any bookish events in your area? Thanks, Matthew. I think the reading culture here is like everywhere else. I haven't noticed much uh, difference. Um, we have well-stocked bookshops and public libraries. Um, there are book clubs, but it depends where you live. I mean, I'm lucky enough that I live in a large town, in the largest town on the largest island. Um, so I'm reasonably happy with what it has to offer. Uh, the only bookish event I usually attend is an outdoors book fair that takes place every year in May. Uh, that came back last month after a hiatus that lasted a couple of years for obvious reasons. And it was a bit disappointing because uh, it was a lot smaller than it had been in previous years. Now, your question about the most famous author from the Canary Islands is easy. That would be Benito Perez Galdós, our most famous and acclaimed author. He was a realist novelist from the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and he published extensively. He has lots of famous novels, but the best one is probably Fortunata and Jacinta. Um, the only thing is that his novels are all set in Spain and not here in the Canary Islands because he moved to Madrid as a young man and lived there for the rest of his life. Now, as for living authors, there are too many to mention. Alberto Vázquez Figueroa has written many best-selling novels. Alexis Ravelo is also very popular right now. And if you're interested in our literature, I recommend this book that I have here, which is La Enciclopedia de la Literatura Canaria. Uh, in this book, you'll find information about our main authors from the time of the Castilian conquest onwards. So the next question comes from Bookie and the Beast. And it is, how many languages do you speak? Thanks, nice question. So I love this question because I love languages. I speak six languages and I read in all of them. My first language is Spanish, but I also speak English, Portuguese, Catalan, French and Italian, and I am learning German. Uh, Bookie and the Beast also asks the next question, which is what are some books or authors that everyone seems to love, but you can't get into? Okay, uh, yes, there are some popular or acclaimed authors whose books I struggle to enjoy. I will mention only two, okay? one classic and one contemporary. So the classic author I don't have as much um, love for as many people seem to do is probably Charles Dickens. I do like Great Expectations and I even made a video about it here. Um, but I have tried to read some of his other books and have never been able to get into them that much. That said, I am wholly prepared to change my mind about Dickens. He's definitely an author I would like to read more from. So perhaps I should do a little Dickens reading project at some point in the future. So 
I could at least have a better sense of his writing and also be fairer to him. And the popular contemporary writer whose writing I don't appreciate that much is Sally Rooney. Now, there was a lot of hype around her first two novels, uh, Conversations with Friends and Normal People. Critics I read seemed to love her books so much that I decided to read them. But, you know, I have to be completely honest with you, for the life of me, I fail to see what's so special about her writing. Sorry. Well, thank you so much for your questions, Bookie and the Beast. Our next question comes from Amelia Reeds, and she asks, if you achieved to be fluent in German, which author would you be the most interested in reading in the original? And you're not allowed to choose Thomas Mann. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for uh, your question, Amelia. So this is a tough one. My main motivation for learning German is actually the hope that one day I might be able to read German language literature and translate it. That's my main motivation. I, my main motivation is not traveling or working in Germany or anything like that. I just want to read uh, German language books. So I have uh, compiled a list of books uh, by different authors that I would like to read when, if I become fluent in German. And Thomas Mann, I'm sorry to say, is top of my list. And I think Amelia reads, knows or suspects that, which is why she's being facetious in her question. But since I'm not allowed to say Thomas Mann, I think I would say Franz Kafka, because he's such an important and influential writer that I would love to read all his works and, of course, if possible, do so in the original German. Okay, the next question comes from Adolfo Garcia Albarracin, who asks, do you read any books by Elizabeth von Arnim? And how about Catherine Mansfield? I've never read her books. Thank you, Adolfo. I have read some short stories by Catherine Mansfield a long time ago, but nothing by von Arnim yet. But I would like to read books by both of them for sure. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. And that comes from The Falcon, who says, I guess I would like to know if you yourself have ever written anything or plan to someday. I would be really interested to read something of yours. Well, thank you. That is very flattering. I have written fiction, uh, but very extremely few people have read it. I have never been published and I don't have any real ambition about being published right now. I do write bits from time to time, but I'm not very consistent and I don't have a routine for writing fiction, which is extremely important if you want to write seriously. I never say never though. So let's move on to the next question and that comes from Ben from the channel Doom Antidote and he asks, when you finish Proust, do you have another big one in mind as in your next big reading project? Um, thanks, Ben. Uh, ben has a great taste in books and a great channel, by the way. So you guys should check it out if you don't know it already. So yes, I do have a big one in mind. I haven't announced it yet because I was waiting to finish Proust first, but I don't mind giving you a little preview here. So after I finish In Search of Lost Time, and I'm getting really close to that right now, I intend to read War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Now, the plan is to spread this huge novel over a few months and go deep into it. But I will explain all the details about this reading project when we get closer to it. In the meantime, let's move on to the next question question. Actually, uh, next set of questions because Miguel Angel Thomas has several questions and they're all great. So I will answer them one by one. So the first one is, out of all the authors you have read so far, whose prose have you enjoyed the most? And what is it about the author's writing style that makes it special to you? Okay, that is a great question. Uh, what I love about reading novels is the variety of writing styles that you can encounter. And since we're talking about the quality of the prose, I only feel qualified to talk about writers whose work I have read in the original language. So I will mention a few. Saramago, J.M. Coetzee, Janet Winterson, Marcel Biasich, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, but there are many more I could mention and it would probably depend on when you asked me. It is really hard to pinpoint for me as well what I like about the quality of the prose in their writing because all the authors I've mentioned um, write in different styles. I think generally I like clear, simple prose. I prefer short sentences and a simple, clear, accurate language. I usually don't like purple prose. Um, that is the kind of prose that is too ornate or extravagant, but I can make exceptions for the likes of Oscar Wilde or Alan Hollinghurst. And I don't like 
uh, many metaphors. Okay, the second question is, I see you read and cover literary fiction almost exclusively, but what kinds of genre fiction do you enjoy? Uh, this is a good question. I only talk about the books I read, and I only read the books that I'm interested in. So you could surmise from that that I am not that interested in genre fiction, and you wouldn't be totally wrong. However, I have enjoyed reading some science fiction classics, uh, June, Solaris, a few novels by Ursula K. Le Guin, and I think I would like to read more science fiction. I am not a great reader of genre fiction because most of it just doesn't interest me, it just doesn't appeal to me, and I already have a huge list of books that I will probably not live long enough to read, so I wouldn't want to waste my time with books that I'm not even interested in, that don't even appeal to me. Having said that, I have nothing against genre fiction, okay? I want to make that very clear. And I would even be open to reading some detective fiction and, as I said, more science fiction, perhaps. Okay, his next question is, are there any authors that you absolutely refuse to read and why? No, I can't name any uh, authors whose work I wouldn't read just because it's written by them, you know, at least if we are talking about literary fiction. Next question, what are some literary tropes that you love and some that, that you hate? Mm, you know, I don't have any preferences, I've never really thought about this. Uh, the only literary trope I hate is cliché, but I don't tend to encounter clichés all that often in the books I normally read. And also, as I said a couple of questions ago, I don't like the overuse of metaphor in prose. His next question is, in your opinion, can a graphic novel, comic book, or manga have the same literary value as a great novel? Hmm, nice one. I think I'm a little bit out of my element with this question, but I will try to answer it because I do have an opinion about this. Um, I think graphic novels, comic books, and mangas are three different things. Well, manga is a kind of comic book, isn't it? But very different from American uh, comic books, the way I see it. I'm not a great reader of any of these uh, mangas or comic books or graphic novels, so I'm open to being educated if I say something stupid here. That's what the comment section is for. Now, the way I understand it, manga is more visual, so I am not sure if I would say that uh, manga is literature. I'm not sure that I would think of manga as a literary genre, because I think images are more important than words in manga. And that would mean to me that manga could potentially have great artistic value, but I'm not sure about literary value. And I might say the same thing about comic books, although, you know, manga is a kind of comic book, so gets a bit complicated. Um, all that said, I was into comic books a lot, in a really big time, when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Maybe 10, 11, 12, yeah. Uh, so comic books worked for me as a gateway into reading, because before I read literature for pleasure, what I read for pleasure were comic books, mostly. So. The comic books were really important in my early development as a reader. I was feeling a bit nostalgic a few years ago, so I tried to read comic books again, but it just wasn't the same, I just wasn't able to rekindle my love for comic books. So right now I would say that I would much rather read a novel or a short story than a comic book, that would be my inclination. Now, as for graphic novels, again, I just haven't read enough of them, probably one or two or three back at that time when I was also trying to get into comic books, and graphic novels didn't really work for me. Uh, but I would be happy to read more graphic novels if you have any recommendations. Oh, the next question is easy. Are you a music while reading person or a silence while reading person? Definitely silence. What are some of your favorite places to read? Easy as well, at home, lying down. The next question is a bit more complex. What language have you found makes for the best prose? You speak five languages, and one has to be better than the others at effectively and aesthetically getting words across to readers. Correction, I speak six languages, not five. And, uh, you know, I actually don't agree with that idea that there are superior 
or more literary languages than others. And I have to say that I love all the languages I speak equally. So no, I don't think any of those languages is better at getting words across to readers at all. I think they're all the same. Next question also comes from Miguel Angel and he asks, do you have a favorite bookstore or library? I have a few, but if I had to choose just one, I think I would probably pick a bookstore named Ler de Vagar in Lisbon, Portugal. But I love discovering new bookstores. So thank you very much, Miguel Angel, for all your questions. And let's move on to questions from other uh, viewers. So we have Fadishta here and uh, they ask, who is your favorite Brazilian author and your favorite Portuguese author? And have you reviewed Clarice Lispector's work? Great questions, thank you. So I feel like my journey into Brazilian and Portuguese literature has barely begun and that I still need to read a lot more before I can give you proper answers to those really interesting questions. But I will give you tentative answers for the time being with a proviso that I might change my mind as I read more. So from Brazil, I would say right now Machado de Siche, but I still need to read most of his books. And I also need to discover the work of other Brazilian writers. Now, as from Portugal, I would say uh, José Saramago, but probably because he's the Portuguese writer that I have read the most. Now, as for the work of the great Clarice Lispector, yeah, there is a video here on my channel that I made uh, quite a while ago, uh, so maybe before you came on board. Um, and in that video, I discussed everything I had read from her at the time, and I don't think I've read anything new since then. So I'm going to link to that video in the show notes in case you haven't watched it yet and want to watch it. I would like to read and reread more by Clarice Lispector and make more videos about her books because I think she's a fascinating author. She's just so difficult to talk about though. Um, I have read a few of her novels and also some of her short stories, but she's one of those writers that I think I would like to read everything they ever wrote. Okay, next question comes from Norman from the channel Notis Hefta. And he asks if I read plays too. Thanks, Norman. Dankeschön. Uh, this is a timely question because it allows me to talk about our reading Shakespeare project, whereby we're reading all his plays. So we're starting this month with Hamlet and there are going to be more plays in July and August, etc. So just this week, a few days ago, I published a video about Hamlet and there will be more to follow. So watch that video and keep an eye out for those videos in that series. It's going to be amazing. We're going to read every single play by Shakespeare. So the answer is yes, I do read plays. I mostly read novels, that's true, but I also read short stories, essays, poetry and plays. I read a bit of everything. I know that some people don't like reading plays or find reading plays difficult. Um, but I am used to it because I read a lot of plays when I was a student, some of which I would actually like to reread, and I do enjoy reading plays, yes. Okay, next we have a few questions from a viewer named Lana uh, Chelevich, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, she asks, I would like to know who your favorite author from your country is, as well as which authors have been the biggest influence on your reading life. Also, what if anything changed in your reading life after you started your channel? These are all great questions, Lana. Thank you so much. So, okay, let's talk about books from my country. So I have read some books from the Canary Islands, but I don't think I have a favorite author. I could tell you about the book that made the biggest impact on me or has made the biggest impact on me so far and that would be this novel here, Mararia by Rafael Arosarena. Now this is a novel from the 1970s. It is set on the island of Lanzarote. You might have heard of Lanzarote because José Saramago, one of my favorite writers, lived on that island for many years. He spent the last couple of decades of his life living there. Okay, so this novel is set in Lanzarote, but not present-day Lanzarote, set in a small town, in fact a village. It is about an old woman who many people consider to be a witch, but that woman in her youth was extremely beautiful and seductive. Now many people in that village blame her for everything bad that ever happens in the village or to them. And now talking about it, I feel like I should probably read Mararia again soon. I also love another novel, something a lot more contemporary. It's a debut novel by an author named Andrea Abreu, a local author from 
uh, My Island from Tenerife. Uh, her uh, debut novel is called Panza de Burro, which is kind of hard to translate. It's a local expression that refers to the weather typical of the northern part of Tenerife when it's like cloudy but the sun still comes through. It's very difficult to explain the title but anyway this is a great novel. It came out in 2020 so it's very recent and it's about two girls who grow up in a rural and isolated part in the north of Tenerife. Now about which authors, universal authors, have been the biggest influence on my reading life? Um, that's really hard to say but I always think about those authors that I first read when I was a teenager or a young adult and made a big impact on me. So the first one was probably Albert Camus. I read The Stranger when I was around 14, I think, and it just changed the way I looked at life and literature. Very soon after came, or around the same time probably, came Cortázar and García Márquez. Latin American literature was and continues to be important to me. I don't have anything anything at all against authors from Spain but when it comes to reading in Spanish I generally prefer writers from Argentina, Mexico, Colombia and other Spanish-speaking Latin American countries. The last uh, question that you asked Lana is very deep. Has my reading life changed after starting my channel? Uh, the answer is yes I think so and I think it's changed my reading life for the better hopefully. I think I now read more and I read with intent. Now I already read a lot before doing this, obviously that's one of the reasons why I started this channel. I already read a lot. But you know, reading back then before I started my channel was always a solitary pursuit. Whereas now I'm so lucky because I get to talk about the books I read with other great readers and that also makes it a lot more fun. It makes reading a lot more fun and it also makes me want to read more and better books. And the next question also relates to that in a way. It's a question that comes from Endor Master. They ask, what were your motivations to start this channel and do you have any suggestions to start a channel? Thanks for your question. Uh, back in the day, uh, before I had the channel, I discovered a few channels that talk about literature. I didn't know that even existed. I don't know how I happen on those channels and I just love their content. Some of those channels that I discovered back in the day don't exist anymore or they don't publish videos anymore or at least haven't in a while. So I'm going to mention just two that still run which are The Book Chemist and Brown Girl Reads. Now there are many other book channels that I love right now uh, that probably existed back then but I just didn't know them. So just watching those videos. I didn't know that that kind of content existed before and more importantly watching those videos and other videos I felt like I would love to do it too. So not only did I enjoy watching the videos I thought oh this sounds like something that would be so much fun to do. But it did take me a while before I decided to start my channel, probably a couple of years, uh, because I just thought I would be bad at it or I just had no idea how to do it. So when I started making my videos I thought of it just as a hobby. That means that I was happy if I could just get more than a couple of views per video and the odd comment. Things have changed now and I'm a little bit more ambitious or I have changed my expectations a little bit. It is still a hobby but uh, I do take it a lot more seriously. Now I don't know if I have any valuable advice to offer uh, for people who want to start their own channels because I feel that I'm still learning. You know I still feel that I have so much to learn about this so all I would say is that if you want to do it just do it. Don't think too much about it because many people start channels and then stop making content which is totally fine because I think you need to do it to know if you enjoy doing it and then if you enjoy doing it continue doing it. If you don't enjoy doing it stop. The technical aspects are super important. I think sound and image quality are important but sound is always going to be more important than uh, image I think. You can watch tutorials on how to make videos, how to edit videos and what equipment options there are and so I'm not going to go into that. Now as for content I would say talk about the books you like to read and talk about the books you read because so many people just uh, turn on the camera and they talk about books they have, books they own, books they have bought which is fun it's fine and it's fun. I like watching those videos but then you go back to their channels to see if they've read those books and they don't ever 
really seem to read them. So don't do, do that. Talk about books that you do read. Read the books and talk about them. And people who love the same books as you will find you and will watch your videos. Now, there are also many ways to present content. So just look at your favorite creators and uh, you will notice that everyone has a different style. Decide what style would suit you better. Practice maybe and then try your own version of the style that you like best. I hope that's helpful. The next question comes from BMAEI5 who says, I read the Borges and Cortázar short stories you mentioned. That's great. Uh, please recommend any other short stories you highly regard. Okay, so thank you. I'm really glad you enjoyed reading Borges and Cortázar. My job is done. I'm going to make more videos about short stories for sure. But right now I'm just going to mention three different short stories that I love and I'm going to recommend them to you and everyone watching this video. The first one is Odor of Chrysanthemums by D.H. Lawrence. The second one is The Island at Midnight by Cortázar. And the third one is The Enormous Radio by John Cheever. Now those are three of my favorite short stories. Okay, viewer Vanessa Pessoa very kindly left me her question which is how was the process to learn all the languages you speak? Nice question Vanessa, thank you. It takes many years to be fluent in a language and you never really stop learning. I began to learn English when I was three or four years old at school but only really became fluent when I was 18 or 19 but my English has improved a lot since then. I also studied French at school but mostly I am self-taught because I haven't really studied any of the other languages I speak. Well obviously Spanish is my first language and I studied it at school as well but not as a foreign language. So what do I do? What's the process? Well I listen and read as much as possible in the languages that I want to learn or improve. So I make sure that the languages I learn are part of my daily life. Really there are no secrets, just do that and keep going. Okay the next question comes from Keith Bruton and he asks, can you name your top five favorite writers of all time? Thanks Keith, no I cannot, this is a really tough question but I thought a lot about it. And yeah, I just, I can't. I just couldn't come up with just five writers. So I gave myself an extra rule to answer your question. I hope you don't mind that. So I decided that I would only be able to choose living writers or writers who were alive in my lifetime. I think that would narrow it down and make it a lot easier because it removes all the classics that uh, I would have to name otherwise and would be more than five. So with that in mind, with that limitation in mind, so living writers or writers who were alive in my lifetime, I would say five writers, okay? I would name Marilyn Robinson, José Saramago, Jorge Luis Borges, Roberto Bolaño, and Ann Tyler. Ask me this question next month again and you might get a totally different answer. Keith also asks if there is a popular writer that I haven't got round to reading yet. Yes, plenty of them. I haven't read anything by Stephen King, Dan Brown, J.K. Rowling, Tom Clancy. You know, but these are authors whose works uh, don't interest me. I have a long list of classics I haven't read yet and those are going to be my priority always. Next question comes from Luis Romain and he asks, do you read nonfiction as well? Uh, thanks Luis, yes, I do read nonfiction. I read history, literary theory, literary criticism. Not as much nonfiction as I used to read when I was a student because fiction is irresistible to me and given the choice, I would always pick out a novel or a short story over an essay anytime. Hmm. Alba Mar from the channel Seriela asks me, Juan, please just give a brief description of what acquiring books is like where you live, bookstores, libraries, uh, shipping costs, availability. This is a nice question, Alba, thank you. For Spanish language books, I usually mostly use local bookstores because you get all the new books there and you can order any that they don't have and they usually get them within a couple of days. Books here are expensive, you ask about costs. Uh, books are expensive here. They're between 15 and 20 euros, sometimes more. Now for books in other languages, and I read in other languages, mostly English, but also Portuguese, etc., etc., I go online and mostly use the book depository because they do free delivery and they deliver to the Canary Islands or I use ebooks. Why do I do that? Well, I don't know about Puerto Rico. I don't know what the situation is like there, but we have a 
bit of a funny status, the Canary Islands within the European Union and then in relationship with Spain and it's very complicated. So not all online retailers deliver to the Canary Islands, uh, which is one of my least favorite things about living here actually. So even ordering books online from Portugal, which is the nearest European country to us, can be a bit of a nightmare. It can be expensive and delivery can take more than one month sometimes, which is why I'm so grateful for the book depository because they don't charge for delivery and also they deliver to the Canary Islands no problem. Now about public libraries, well we have two large well-stocked libraries where I live and then several smaller ones as well, but the one that is closer to me only opens in the mornings and it's closed on weekends. So that makes it almost impossible for me to use. I guess our government doesn't care much about making culture accessible to people. And on that note, thank you everyone for all your questions and I hope you have enjoyed my answers. I will see you again very soon on my next video. Thanks again, bye.